Hey guys, over the last week or so, we have been doing some image analysis. Specifically, we've been looking at how ads define gender in our society. What we're going to be doing now is putting all that you've learned together in your second major writing project. You can think of this project as your midterm assignment. So here in module six, week six module, you'll see a handout called Criteria for Analysis Essay. If you have not read that yet, please do that. That handout has a list of the criteria, the possible criteria you can use to apply to your chosen ad. What I'm going to do in this video is apply some of those criteria to some sample ads to give you an idea of what you're going to be doing in your essay. Here in this handout you were asked to read, the first criteria listed on the page is content. And content has to do with the major objects or elements of the ad. So let's take a quick look at a sample. This is an advertisement for Che, which is a men's magazine, and you can see their logo in the bottom right hand corner of the ad. Now, obviously, the most important content in this particular ad is the woman's body. What's interesting here is the placement of the body. Her head is kind of cut off. We're looking at her not only from behind, but from below so that our eye is sort of drawn to her butt, right? And the skirt that sort of shows um, tags that look like phone numbers you can rip off, right? So by including this content, this advertiser is not advertising um, relationships or love or possibility, they're obviously using sex to sell, right? She is being used here as a sex object in this ad. So this is an important criteria. The content of this ad is important. The next important criteria you see listed here is framing. And framing has to do with what is going on around or surrounding the product or major content of a particular ad. Let's look at a couple samples. This is an ad for Simply Orange Orange Juice. Again, you see the product um, showcased here. Around the product, surrounding or framing the product is this orange grove. Right here you see orange trees full of ripe oranges. Now, why would an advertiser want to set their product in an orange grove? We know, logically, that Simply Orange Orange Juice is made in a factory. But factories aren't necessarily appetizing. By placing the product here in the orange grove, by framing the product with this orange grove, the advertiser is not just selling orange juice. They're selling freshness. They're selling this concept or idea of something being all natural. So the framing here is really important to our understanding of the ad. The third criteria you see listed here on this page is composition. Composition has to do with how certain elements are overlapped or um, touch each other. So let's again take a look at a couple of samples. So this is a Volvo ad, and in this Volvo ad you'll see two um, important pieces of content. In this case, the um, lion who is sort of shadowed below the car and then the car itself. Right. And these two pieces of content overlap in a kind of interesting way. Um, so they are composed in an interesting way. Um, what you see here is this car driving down what looks like maybe a wet road and the lion is below it like a kind of reflection. By composing them with the lion upside down overlapping the car, the implication here is that inside the car is this sort of inner lion, this inner strength or force. The next criteria you're being asked to consider is focus, and focus has to do with how sharp or how blurry elements in the image are. Often, um, an advertiser will leave certain elements of an ad blurry so that your um, eyes will be drawn to some other element of the ad. Let's take a look at a sample. So here is an ad for Peacock from NBC Universal, which is a uh, streaming service. If you'll look at the way in which this particular uh, ad is framed, in the background, it's kind of blurry, but it sort of looks like a classroom, which kind of goes hand in hand with the text here, 900 plus courses to play. Notice that by making the um, background blurry, it brings the girl's face into focus. And so you're drawn to her upturned face, her bright eyes, her big smile. 
The idea here is that this um, service is educational and that by using NBC's Universal Peacock service, um, kids will not only learn, but they'll be entertained and enjoy the process. Lighting is another criteria that is particularly important. So let's take another look at that um, Simply Orange ad. So if you pay attention to the lighting in this ad, it looks like there is a shaft of sunlight coming through this way in the ad. And you can sort of see that because the bottles here cast a shadow and there's this brightness here, right? So the orange juice glass, the product itself is sort of lit from behind. Why might the advertiser want to do that? for a couple of different reasons. One is to draw the viewer's focus. By putting this lighting behind it, um, our eyes are drawn there. We're drawn to the product. We pay attention to the thing that is being sold. Another thing is that the product sort of glows. Again, this ad is selling health and vitality and goodness. And so this orange juice is sort of glowing with this inner health and vitality. The next criteria you see listed here is texture. Texture has to do with how something feels. Does it feel smooth? Does it feel rough? Um, how does the ad help to show off that particular texture? Let's take a look at the Volvo ad again. Using the black background and the sort of lighting from behind, the creators of this ad create an interesting texture for the content of this particular ad. So the car itself looks kind of shiny, looks smooth, glossy. You could have sort of imagine running your hand over it and having that kind of smooth texture underneath your fingers. In contrast, you see the lion underneath. And if you look, you'll see all these kind of um, lines within that sort of represent fur. They also represent a kind of texture, a kind of rough, furry texture. So here, the creators of this ad are creating this interesting contrast between the sort of smooth styling of the car and the inner rough or wildness of the engine, the power of the car. The last criteria you see listed on this page is angle and vantage point. An angle and vantage point has to do with how the image is presented, like where does the camera appear to be? At what angle is the camera and why does that matter? So let's take another look at that Che magazine. So we sort of mentioned already, it looks like the camera here is maybe on the ground looking up, right? And that's important. That particular angle draws the uh, viewer's eye here, right? sort of creating this sexual um, tone to this particular ad, right? On top of that, the camera seems very close, making the woman's body appear bigger. So again, it draws the viewer's focus. The eyes are drawn to her so that the uh, consumer, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, so the consumer, the buyer, can associate the magazine, Che, with this idea of sex or sexuality represented by the woman. So this handout gives you a list of seven potential criteria to apply to your ad. Some of these criteria will apply to your chosen ad and some will not, um, and that's okay, but you're gonna pick at least three or four. To help you with this process, I have a couple more criteria that I think are really important for you to add to your list. Here you see color listed as a criteria at the top of the page. Go ahead and maybe pause the video and copy this down in your notes. Color is often used by advertisers to sell a particular idea or ideal or to create a certain feeling in the viewer. So when you look at this ad, this is a Heinz ketchup ad, you'll see that the dominant colors here are red, white, and blue. Well, as an American audience, red, white, and blue, we associate with our nation and with this concept of patriotism. The idea here behind this particular ad is if you buy Heinz ketchup, you're a good patriot, you're a good citizen. And they use that color to sell that concept or idea. And here is the last criteria I'm gonna give you today. It's contrast. Contrast has, has to do with shades of one particular color. So you might have different shades of gray or different shades of red. In this case, this is a Prada Candy Kiss ad and they are selling this Prada um, perfume. The shade here is this kind of um, flesh color. Notice that the shade of the bottle 
is very similar in contrast. There's almost a lack of contrast here between the perfume bottle and the woman. There's a reason that we're doing this here, right? The woman in this ad looks naked. She also looks like that ideal image of feminine beauty. She's very thin, for instance. And so the um, ad is associating the product, trying to say that the product and the woman are the same thing. In other words, if you use this product, you will be this ideal of feminine beauty and sexuality. On the second page of the handout, you were asked to read. There is sort of a shortened version of all of the criteria that we've listed. Content, framing, composition, focus, lighting, texture, angle, and vantage point. You'll also see a reference to text. In this case, I want you to think of text as the words on the page, and you can use that as another piece of criteria. Anytime an advertiser adds words to an ad, I think that's important, and you can sort of write a paragraph on the advertiser's use of text. Let's take a look at a sample. Here we are again at the Simply Orange Orange Juice ad. I real quickly want to mention here that as you're picking ads for your ad analysis essay, you must pick an ad that has a product to sell. So it could be selling a magazine, it can be selling toothpaste, it can be selling Coke or orange juice, but it must sell a product. It shouldn't sell a concept or idea. It shouldn't be a PSA. For example, if you find an ad that says something like report domestic abuse, they're not selling a product there. Um, they're telling you something you should or shouldn't be doing. That's a public service announcement. I want you to find an ad that sells a product. And it can be any kind of ad. It doesn't necessarily have to do with gender, although we have been talking about that for the last couple weeks. You certainly can choose one of the ads that you wrote about in one of your last two reading logs, but you're not required to. So let's talk about the text in this ad. Notice that the text is interestingly contrasted with the background. So you have this dark green framing that helps the white words sort of jump out on the page, yes? And the words say, honestly, simple. Honestly is an important word. It's a word that means that you can sort of trust the creators of this product. Again, they're selling health, they're selling goodness, they're trying to tell you that theirs is a company that can be trusted. So in this case, the text, the word honest, is important. So is the word simple. Again, the idea here by putting this product um, in the orange grove is to imply that um, the oranges go straight into the bottle. Well, we know that that's not true. We know that this product is made in a factory, but they're sort of messing with the consumer, messing with the viewer to try to imply that this is a very simple product. It's nothing but oranges in the jar, no preservatives, no um, minerals, nothing like that, just squeezed orange, right? So the text is really important. Again, no matter what ad you choose, if there are words or text on the page, I highly recommend you making that one of the criteria you focus on. So in my next video, I'm going to talk to you about how to put that criteria together to create a thesis statement.